your deficit is like 30,000 then it means that the person will be left with 30,000 to spend is that 30,000 able to pay for their living expenses then that is why the visa officer then comes to ask you how many children does your uncle have oh my uncle has two children so your uncle is actually spending half of their money on you as an uncle mind you the u.s is a very individualistic state that if the visa officer is someone who has stayed in the u.s for a long time they are very individualistic right so to think that your uncle will spend half of their annual earnings to pay for your fees when they have two children i saw one transcript that after the person said my uncle has two children the visa officer was like i'm sorry i'm not able to grant your visa at this time welcome to the channel where education meets adventure and passions are transformed into life of excel with emmy welcome back to the f1 visa interview series once again this is excel with emmy on this channel we talk about career education lifestyle if these are subjects that are of interest to you please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notification for this channel today we are looking at the question how are you funding your deficit before we answer this question let's look at the very types of funding you want to mention in the visa interview why you want to mention sponsorship from scholarships is one of the surest way that you can get your visa approved nonetheless we understand that a lot of people do not get the funding from scholarships and so we move to the next sponsorship from family this one you want to talk about close relative it's like your mother your father your brother and sister stepsisters all of that qualify for that oftentimes we actually use uncle because usually the bank statement that you are sending does not have your father's name so you have to say that that is your uncle right so we, i want to establish the fact that visa officers are overly familiar with funding from uncle or auntie because if you take um 20 people that are going for visa interview from africa you are going to get about 12 or 15 of them saying that their funding is from their uncle or their auntie so you want to make sure that you are emphasizing your relationship with your uncle or auntie that makes it special from the other people as well as what unique thing is making your uncle or your auntie spend such huge amount of dollars to fund your education so that is the two things you want to emphasize your close relationship with the person and why or what unique thing is making the person fund for your education at this time and then this sounds unrealistic but then if you can make the person sign an affidavit that will be very good and i'll explain that in the subsequent things i'm come to mention the other type of funding we have is funding from yourself or sponsorship from yourself now yes people have that much money to fund for themselves um to school abroad but with this you want to emphasize on who you are so like the kind of job you are doing that is making you earn such amounts of money why you want to pursue that degree that is making you spend that huge sums of money the last but not the least is sponsorship from loans so sponsorship from loans i'm going to tackle in my next video because i want to mention some things about sponsorship from loans now, like in my previous video i did mention that to better answer these questions you want to understand why the visa officer is asking this question how are you finding your deficits what is the person trying to understand once you know what the person is trying to understand you are able to come up with the best answers right so with this how are you finding yourself how are you finding your deficit the visa officer is trying to understand three things and these three things are the availability of your funds are you able to provide the money today if your visa is granted and then is the money available are you not going to be a liability to the united states number two is the credibility of the source or the credibility of the funds can this person really sponsor you like they are saying is the person not going to change their mind so if you are saying your uncle is sponsoring you how credible as the person have that much money to sponsor you that it's not going to be a burden so much that they are going to change their mind is the money truly coming from whatever source you are saying that your money is coming from last but not the least they are looking at the sufficiency of the fund 
so if you are saying that your uncle is funding you is the money enough to be able to fund your education for example you say that your uncle is funding you and then you show your uncle's bank statement and they are earning sixty thousand dollars annually right your deficit is like thirty thousand then it means that the person will be left with thirty thousand to spend is that thirty thousand able to pay for their living expenses then that is why the visa officer then comes to ask you how many children does your uncle have Oh, my uncle has two children so your uncle is actually spending half of their money on you as an uncle mind you the u.s is a very individualistic state that if the visa officer is someone who has stayed in the u.s for a long time they are very individualistic right so to think that your uncle will spend half of their annual earnings to pay for your fees when they have two children i saw one transcript that after the person said my uncle has two children the visa officer was like i'm sorry i'm not able to grant your visa at this time in every i know you are watching a lot of youtube videos to answer this question in every answer that you choose to give make sure that you are addressing the credibility availability and the sufficiency of the funds another bonus tip you want to always mention the sponsorship from the school first because that one really passes the test of the credibility sufficiency and availability then you can look at the other forms of funding that you have now let's move to another dicey part of this sponsorship issue like someone sponsoring you from the united states yes you can say that someone from the united states is funding you right but this gives you an additional responsibility you can say that you have a relative in the united states that is funding your education it will still be um uh, it will still have to pass these three things that we have talked about the credibility availability and sufficiency of the funds right after it has passed then you have an additional responsibility of one proving that you have strong ties to your home country because if you have someone funding you then the probability of that someone aiding you to stay in the united states after school is very possible so you want to quickly quickly make sure that you add, uh, exhibit strong ties to your home country also you want to establish why the person is sponsoring you so you talk about the uniqueness of your relationship what special thing is between you and the person what special thing has a person seen that is making them sponsor your education for example again the person in the u.s is earning sixty thousand dollars annually your deficit is like twenty thousand thirty thousand now the VO is as asking how much money the person is left with after funding your education are they able to pay their bills and still have enough money how much family do they have so you still want to create that story that will convince the visa officer yeah on the issue of funding let's also look at using investments as a funding method or going to the visa officer saying that you are using this investment as a funding option using investment as a funding option is good it can be a double-edged sword in the sense that it can show that oh you have investment in ghana or you have that much money to fend for yourself however when you are using investment as a funding option we are looking at the liquidity of the investment how quickly can you transform the investment into money right let's say we need your tuition now i've granted your visa now can that investment be able to be liquidified into money if no then you don't need to use that investment as a funding option in your visa interview so here you want to pay attention to the maturity date of your investment um let's say you have some bonds somewhere some stock somewhere when is it investing or when is it maturing um is it within the time frame that we need the fees these are the things you want to consider if you are using someone's investment or your investment as a form of funding in your visa interview you also want to provide documents that actually will show that this investment exists and this investment is accessible and this investment is reliable i can give you specific examples of saying that your funding comes from here your funding comes from there but most of the time we talk about funding from the school funding from yourself your relatives and funding from loans every point that we took we looked at the how to prove this funding right we didn't talk much about the scholarship because usually it's easy if you have a scholarship if your funding is coming or your deficit is coming from a relative or yourself then you need to go the extra mile of proving why you are using such money to fund for yourself or someone who has a life who has a family is willing to spend such amount of money to fend your education in or make sure that every answer that you choose is 
answering the question the credibility of the funds the sufficiency of the funds and the availability of the funds once you have drafted your answer and you think it qualifies for all of these three things that i've mentioned i bet your visa will be approved i'll meet you in my next video where we are talking about how to get your visa approved with a student loan so if you have not subscribed to this channel please do well to subscribe turn on notification for this channel share comments like thank you and i'll see you in my next video bye